Okay, so hey there guys. So today's video is going to be my April favorites. I cannot believe April is basically over. I'm actually filming this a couple of days before April is over, but it's like the 29th today and I this is really like the only day I have to sit down and film um, for like a week or two because May's coming up and I have finals in a few weeks. I cannot believe my first semester of school, my first year of school, I mean, is almost over. Like, I feel like I just started going back to school, uh, like, last week, and I cannot believe May is almost here. It's insane. So, we have a ton of favorites to get through. I just did a super simple look today because I'm going to go study with my boyfriend for my math test, and then we're just going to make pasta at his house and just watch a movie, so I didn't want to do too much makeup today. So we're just going to jump right in and talk about these products. I'm going to start with foundation first because I feel like that's going to be the easiest to talk about. So I think my favorite foundation this month has been the Burberry um, Cashmere Long Lasting Flawless Soft Matte Foundation in the shade Porcelain Number no. 11. I actually really love this foundation. I've been using it a ton more. My two go-to staple foundations usually are the number 7 foundation, which I'm wearing today, or the Physician's Formula, the Healthy Foundation. Um, but I have been testing out a ton of foundations lately. Um, I have like so many foundations in my collection now. I have like over 20, which is a lot for me. Um, but this is really, really good. It's really um, soft on the skin, very comfortable. It has like exactly what it says, a soft matte finish. And I really have been enjoying it. I've been using it more and more, reaching for it a lot. And it's just really light on the skin, has a really nice medium coverage. I wouldn't say this is a full coverage foundation. And like I told you guys, I did pick this up at uh, Marshall's, so this was only 15 bucks. I did not pay full price for this. And it really is a beautiful foundation for dry skin because it's not too matte. And it literally looks like, it kind of really reminds me of the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. It looks like silk on your skin. It looks like a fabric finish. Like the Power Fabric does too, the Giorgio Armani one. That one's not one of my favorites. It's good, but I wouldn't say it's as good as my, sorry about the sun. It's like so much sun right now. Maybe I should just open it up, but it's like literally going to shine so much light. So I'm going to keep closed. But yeah, this is beautiful on the skin. I've been using it a lot. The shade's beautiful. And it also lasts a really good amount of time on the skin. I don't really use this for a long wear foundation, but I do reach for it a ton, and I really have been enjoying it a lot. So that's the first one. I did grab another foundation, so let's put that here. The next foundation that I wasn't actually, like, insanely crazy about, I actually really do enjoy it, and I reach for it a lot. This is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation in the color Oslo. That's my shade. The shade is beautiful on my skin. Um, but I wasn't like too crazy about it when I first tried it. It's really beautiful on the skin. And then I feel like it doesn't last as long as everybody says it does. But I really just have a desire to reach for it and use it. And it really does look gorgeous on the skin when you finish your makeup. Um, my boyfriend's texting me, um, so he's probably wondering when I'm leaving. Um, but I'm trying to film this video as fast as I can. We have a lot of products to get through. Um, but this is gorgeous. Um, it is pretty full coverage, but it has such a beautiful finish. And it looks just really gorgeous on the skin when you finish your makeup. It doesn't look like a completely matte foundation. Um, it just has a really beautiful coverage. Like, when I use this, it covers gorgeously on your skin. Like, it's a little bit more full coverage than like my Dior or my Lancome, which are still my holy grails. But this is becoming one of my favorites. I think this is a really good foundation. I just don't think it lasts as long as my other foundations that I wouldn't say it's a holy grail foundation, but I do think it's a really good one. So I've been using that a lot as well. And then the third one that's like pretty new that I actually really, really like, this is the Lorac Natural Performance Foundation in the color NP1. Um, I did also pick this one up at Marshalls as well. This was only 8 bucks. Really, really good deal. And they got a ton of shades of the Lorac Foundation in Marshalls lately. Actually, the last time I went, which was like a few days ago, I noticed that um, it was pretty much gone. So I'm glad that I picked it up when I did because like most of the the shades were gone by the next time I wanted to pick up 
like something else. Like I've been obviously I go to Marshalls like every week to find good makeup deals. Um, but this is really, really nice. This actually really reminds me of the number seven that I'm wearing today, which is a little bit more coverage. So I like wearing this when I want something lightweight, but it's also going to cover really nicely, and it has a really nice creamy formula. I was really impressed with this because um, I don't really buy Lorac products. I only have the Lorac Pro palette in my collection, and I like rarely use that, so I really am not into Lorac. Um, but this was really, really nice, and I thought since it was a really good deal, I decided to try it, and I'm really glad I did. It's a really, really nice foundation, so I'm going to keep on testing this out. I've used it about three times now, and every time I really like the finish of it. It's not as thick as the number 7, but it also has a little bit more coverage than the number 7. But I'm obsessed with the number 7. I love it so much. Uh, the number 7 Lift and Illuminate, it's my go-to absolute favorite for natural days. Um, but this is really, really good. I like it a lot. So I'm going to keep on using that. Um, and then the uh, next one that's more of a full coverage option that I've been using a ton this month um, that I just wanted to go back and use it again. And I really do love this foundation. This is the CoverGirl Outlast All Day Stay Fabulous 3-in-1 Foundation in the color 310. It's a really good foundation, you guys. It lasts such a long time on my skin. It has a beautiful finish to it. It has a nice full coverage. But it doesn't look too matte on the skin. I actually didn't love this foundation when I first tried it because I felt like it was more for oily skin. And now since I use like less products for most of my foundations, I really do enjoy this as a full coverage option. Especially when I have school all day. Really, really beautiful on the skin. So I've been using this a lot as well. Um, I just wanted to like work it back into my foundations this month. I've actually rotated a ton of my drugstore foundations this month. And... I wanted to see like which ones I still love, and this one's one of my favorites still. I Of course, I love my L'Oreal True Match, but I used this one a little bit more this past month, and it's beautiful, so I really do love this. And it has a very high SPF in it, too. And then um, I wanted to compare these two foundations. So the first one is the MAC Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation. I actually really, really love this for a full coverage op option, option. In the color NW13, I feel like I'm going to be using this a ton in the summertime since it's a waterproof foundation. Um, I feel like it's going to be a, a perfect test to try it out to see like how long it lasts on my skin on like really hot summer days. So I think I'm going to be reaching for it a lot for that. I don't think I'm going to be using my... I really like rarely reach for my all-nighter anymore from Urban Decay. Because I like the coverage of this more. I feel like I have to wear that one and then wear this one to see how they wear. So I'm probably going to do that in the summertime at some point. Probably like sometime in June. Um, but I've been using this a lot more than the Urban Decay. I really haven't used the Urban Decay at all like really this year. Um, which is crazy to me because that used to be one of my favorite full coverage options. But now since I have so many foundations to try, this is really, really good. I really, really like this a lot. It lasts a really long time on the skin. It's really full coverage. I really do like this. And then the last one I want to mention that I might end up returning, but I do want to mention it. This is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation in the color 120. Now I have some cons about this foundation. I did try it out. Sorry, like my if my necklace was like blinding you there. I tried it out in my first impressions get ready with me with Sephora and Ulta makeup that I picked up from the VIB and Ulta 20% off sale. Um, and this one obviously I got from Sephora during the VIB sale and this was like really the only foundation I was interested in trying because um, I picked up this and the Lorac foundation around the same time. And I've tried it out a couple of times. I've tried it out about three times now since that video. And obviously I've been used, I've tried it out twice after that video. I wore it on Monday all day and Wednesday all day when I went to class. Because I have class 9 to 5 on Mondays and Wednesdays, so I like wearing a full coverage foundation when I have to wear a foundation for 8 hours. And the thing about this foundation is that it's amazing that she came out with so many shades, but I feel like she should have came out like with another option besides a matte foundation. I feel like she should have come out with something a little bit more dewy and luminous for dry skin types because I feel like this is much more geared toward normal to oily skin. 
and I have very dry skin. Like, I really don't have combo skin. My skin is very dry. I mean, I feel like some days my skin can be combo. I can get a tiny bit oily in my nose area, but it just gets shiny. Like, I don't have any oils on my face, so I don't have to worry about blotting my skin because um, my skin's not oily. It's super dry. And I've been using a lot less product of this because it's very, very, very full coverage. Like, when I thought... It, when I uh, read that it was a soft matte foundation, I thought it was going to be similar to the Burberry because the Burberry is a soft matte foundation. This one just glides on your skin. It really isn't too full coverage that you don't have to worry about using like too much product. It doesn't look cakey or anything like that. This one, you have to be very careful on how much you put on. I feel like it reminds me of, and it kind of, it really reminds me of the MAC one, but I feel like the MAC one covers better, and I feel like it's a better option than this one. Um, so that's like my biggest con for it. I feel like I used way too much product the first time, like when I used it on camera. I used way too much. Um, so I've been using a lot less, but I don't love how this looks on my skin at the end of the day. I don't love it like when I put it on. So I'm not sure if I'm going to return it. I'm going to try it out a couple more times this next like week or two. And if I don't love it, I am going to return it. But I really, I, I like the finish and it feels comfortable on the skin and it has like a nice like powdery finish. And it's not uncomfortable on the skin. It actually feels really nice. Um, so it's not an uncomfortable matte foundation. I just don't think it's for me because I have much more dry skin. I find that it kind of settles into my wrinkles up here. I don't love it on my nose area, so again, I'm going to test it out for you guys and update you guys in my next favorites video, so we'll see. Um, I like it. I don't love it. So now let's move on to concealers. I really didn't fall in love with a new concealer this month, you guys. I really have just been using the same concealers. I reach for these two a ton. This one is the Catrice Cosmetics Liquid Camouflage Concealer. I just love this. It's super easy to, to work with, and I feel like I'm going to use it up pretty soon. Um, it's just a really nice soft concealer. It blends out beautifully. Um, I love it and it covers really nicely. And this one's in the shade, uh, porcelain, right? Should be porcelain. Where is the shade? It should be porcelain, but yeah, I love this. It's really good. Um, and I feel like I'm going to be kind of upset when I use it up. It's a really good concealer. I'm actually wearing the Wet n Wild concealer today. And then the ColourPop No Filter Concealer, I love this guy. I actually miss it when I don't use it. It's just such a beautiful uh, coverage, and I've, as you can see, I use it a lot. And I use this a lot when I want a full coverage concealer. So this one's in the shade Fair 5. Ever since I got it in the right shade, I use it a ton. I actually ended up returning the Laura Mercier Soft uh, Flawless Fusion Concealer. I just didn't think it covered that well at all. Uh, I just felt like it really didn't do much for me. It was super matte. Um, I think that's why I didn't like it. And I feel like it kind of settled into my fine lines like right after I used it. So I was like, I'm not about that life. I really haven't fallen in love with a full coverage, full price, like uh, high-end concealer for a while. Um, so if you guys have any suggestions on higher-end concealers, let me know. But... I really have just been finding a bunch of drugstore options that I've been falling in love with. The only, like, uh, higher-end concealer I really like is the Kat, Kat Von D Locket Concealer that I've tried recently. But I really only reach for, like, these two and my Tarte Rainforest of the Sea and my Wet n Wild, which I'm wearing today, and my Maybelline Instant Age Rewind I've been using a ton this month. Um, but this one's in the shade Light 16, and I did find this at Marshall's. And this is a really good concealer. It's very creamy. Very long-lasting, and I really love it. It blends out really, really nicely. So I've been using this a lot, too, and I also got this at Marshall's because this is a much older concealer, and I love it. This is awesome. So now we're finally done with foundations and concealers. Now let's move on to eyeshadows. So eyeshadow, I'm not going to go into too much, but I'm just going to tell you guys which ones I've been using a lot. So I've just been reaching for my ColourPop Single Shadows a ton this month. I'm wearing them today all over my eyes. And I just can never get enough of them. They're amazing. I'm not going to go too much into them. But I use, I've use i been using these a lot this month. And I've been reaching for my Makeup Geek Shadows a lot and my Anastasia Shadows. So especially ColourPop or Makeup Geek though. And when I want to wear just a simple look for every day. And I've been off a lot on the weekend. So I've just been using ColourPop or Makeup Geek on my eyes. and. I love my ColourPop shadows, 
So I'm just wearing like wake up call on the crease today with a little bit of note to self to define the crease. And then I'm wearing come and get it all over my lid. This one right here. This is so beautiful with the NYX glitter primer. It really brings out like the dual chrominess of the eyeshadow. And then I kind of just dusted this gold shade and a little bit of this shade on the lid. I've been obsessed with this inner corner, with this shade on my inner corners this month. I've been using it so much. This one is called Let Me Explain. It's such a beautiful eyeshadow and I have it on my inner corners today. And I put it, um, mixed it a little bit with Liar Liar, which is this beautiful pale pink shade. So, so beautiful. Love those shades. And um, Glass Slipper is the only, like, newer shade that I picked up. Gla glass Slipper, Glass Bowl. And it's really, really pretty. Um, I think I liked it a lot more the second time I used it. It's a really unique um, dual chromey shade. And it was really pretty on the lid the second time I used it. I think because I actually used the glitter primer. The next one. Um, I'm going to mention that in a minute. It's just amazing for bringing out pigment in your eyeshadows. Look how pretty that color is. I love it. I definitely did use that more this month. I used it like a couple of times and I really do love that. But yeah, ColourPop shadows are amazing. They're some of my favorites. Speaking of ColourPop shadows, I have to give a shout out again to my ColourPop Dream Street palette by Kathleen Lights. I use this a ton. A ton. Like when I don't use it, I get anxiety for not using it again. I just used it two days ago, and I used it like a couple of, like a week before that. I love this um, eyeshadow palette. I just love the ColourPop formula, and I just think that um, some people say, oh, this palette really isn't that different if you take out the pops of color, but honestly, our, our eyeshadow palette's really that different if you do take out the pops of color. Like, you're left with a neutral palette. So, I feel like that this palette was very smartly laid out. Like, if you want to use, like, the darker shades in this palette, you can use this in the crease and put this on the lid and use these, like, browner toned options in the crease. And you have a full eyeshadow look. Like, I find I don't have to grab other palettes to use this palette. Um, I can just use this palette and I'll be totally fine because I have an inner corner shade. I have lid options. I have crease options that, and I have a brow bone highlight and I have a, a transition shade in here. I use these two all the time as my transition shades. They're so beautiful. And these are beautiful on the lid. These two I love and Mermaid Boy is so gorgeous on the lid. Um, I wore this palette completely like at the end of last month. Um for like a 90s night and it was so beautiful but I've used it a couple of times after that and I just can never get enough of it. I know there's like a bunch of controversy about Kathleen Lights right now since she actually had a failed ColourPop collab and this came out after that. That one was scrapped and this one came out um, because she had like a bunch of controversy like going on about the whole n-word thing which I think is ridiculous honestly because there are so many people that misuse that word and so many more people that say that in a horrible way. And plus, like, I just feel like she got so much flack for it, but she did apologize for it. And I feel like she's such a good uh, example of what, um, I feel like that she's just a really good example of what girls should look up to when it comes to beauty bloggers. Like, I feel like some beauty bloggers are very controversial, like Jeffree Star. Um, Reezy's not, like, cookie-cutter image. And I know, like, I'm not being biased, but I'm just saying, like, if you fess up to your problems, people should just forget about it. Like, even though Jeffree Star, like, he is very dramatic and he just cannot stay out of drama, at least he fessed up to his problems and at least he did apologize about it, but he's still, like, is not respectful towards women, and I'm not going to get, like, into it too much, but I think that people should just, like, chill. The whole thing with, like, the repackaged palette, that's a little bit iffy to me, but we'll see, you know? Like, she didn't, like, go on Snapchat and explain it. She only, like, talked to Peter Mon about it, and she said, oh, they, it was just a failed collab, and they repackaged it, whatever. So, I'm not going to get into it. I really don't care, honestly. I don't own the You Had Me at Hello palette. I own this palette. I'm probably not going to buy any more collab 
products because I just have so many and I have so many of Kathleen Light's products that but I just love this palette for the formula like it's awesome so I'm going to continue to use it I still love Kathleen Light's I'm still going to use her products so yeah I love this um but I'm not going to get into that controversy too much if, because we're just going to waste too much time okay then the next palette I wanted to talk about is the Natasha Denona mini sunset palette I actually really have been enjoying enjoying the can I talk today? I really have been enjoying the uh, formula of this palette. It's really, really nice. And uh, I was really surprised that I actually enjoyed the formula of this as much as I did. I've used it a couple of times now. I used it in that first impressions get ready with me. And I used it last night going out with my boyfriend and his parents. And I've used all five eyeshadows. And Yes, they do. The mattes do take a little bit longer to blend, but I did notice that the lid shades really don't transfer, and I really, really liked that about this palette. So this palette won't break the bank if you're interested in trying out Natasha Denona eyeshadows. It's only twenty five bucks, which I think is a great price. Um, so that this is probably the only eyeshadow palette I'm ever going to pick up from her because it was such a reasonably priced palette. You're basically paying five dollars in eyeshadow, so. Maybe that's a little expensive in the long run, but that's how much I pay for Makeup Geek shadows. So I really don't mind paying $25 for this palette. So I think that this was a really nice price, and I think it's nice. I like it a lot. And I was really impressed that these shimmery shadows didn't transfer. Like, that's like a dream to me. So my boyfriend texted me. Sorry. <laughs> around 420 oh my god can I type all right now let's move on to some other eyeshadow palettes um so I actually have been using the Smashbox full exposure palette quite a bit this month and I actually really like it it's pretty easy to use it's not like my all-time favorite shadow formula but it's actually a really nice palette um I've used it a couple of times. I finally did a neutral look with it a couple of days ago. And the mattes are really nice to use. And the shimmers are actually really pretty on the lid. Um, like I said, I wanted to pick up this eyeshadow palette because I had never tried Smashbox eyeshadows before. And I pretty much have like every single eyeshadow palette I could possibly try. Um, and I really like, I'm not interested in trying any other new formulas right now because I pretty much have tried every single formula that I've wanted to try for the past like three years so I'm pretty good um unless like a deal comes up with comes up in Marshalls then that's the only time I'm going to pick up a new eyeshadow palette but that's mostly where I've been picking up my new eyeshadow palettes I have been enjoying the Too Faced Glitter Bomb palette this month as well but I haven't been reaching for it as much because I have like so many other palettes to try so I didn't want to mention it this month but it is a really pretty eyeshadow palette um, but this guy, I was using it more, and I actually really enjoy it. I know that these, um, Smashbox palettes don't get a lot of love, but it's actually, it's pretty good. I like it a lot, so I've been enjoying it. They're not the best eyeshadows ever, but they are really pretty. I did really like this, uh, tan shade and this shade on my lid. It was really pretty, and I used the other one on the inner corners, and it, it performed really nicely, so... I don't know. I really liked it, so I don't really have any complaints about it. The eyeshadows perform the way that they should. They, they're pretty pigmented, so I like those. Um, and then the last palette I wanted to mention from Marshalls is just the Burberry Gold Shimmer Palette. Um, this one's actually really nice. It's uh, like I said, I wasn't gonna, I wouldn't never pay. Whew, let me slow down. I would never pay a uh, full price for this palette, but they are really nice shimmery shades. They're really soft gold shades, and I really like that. So these are the gold shades, and they're really pretty. I don't know. I like using them with my ColourPop shadows, which is what I typically use them with, and they're just a really nice soft shimmery formula. So again, I would never pay full price for this, but I have been enjoying the formula of these. So and then the last palette I wanted to mention is, of course, the Lime Crime Venus XL palette. I did pick this up, um, like, two months ago, and I have been using it this month as well. Um, obviously, I didn't use it again for a straight week, but every time I use it, I love it. It's so beautiful. The formula is so solid in this palette. I love it. Um, 
Love is such a beautiful shimmery shade on the lid with neutral shades. I use Idolize like every single time I use this palette. It's such a gorgeous matte. Like the mattes are beautiful. The shimmers are beautiful. So like I said, if you're looking for a new palette that you want to play with and have a lot of different options, but you can still kick it up, but you can still keep it really neutral, this is a gorgeous palette. I know they just came out with the Lime Crime Venus 3 palette, but I feel like I don't really need that since I got this one. And I didn't know that they were going to come out with the Venus 3 so fast until like a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, oh, like why couldn't they come out with it like before this palette? And then this one could have came out in April, but then I couldn't have used it as much as I have. But this is beautiful. I love it so much. So I don't think that the Lime Crime Venus 3 is that necessary for me right now. Maybe I'll pick it up in the summertime. It's a really beautiful, like, lavender palette, but I really don't need it. But this is such a gorgeous palette. Like, I love this palette. Um, and then the last two uh, eyeshadow products I wanted to mention, of course, are my Milk Makeup Pigments. I did use these a bunch this month as well. This one is Hotel Lobby. It's a gorgeous gold shade. I love this shade so much. And then Gig is a beautiful, like, bronzy color. So I did get to use these more this month, and I absolutely love these. I cannot stop raving about these. They're amazing. Like, honestly, it makes me want to get rid of all of my, like, single shadows. Like, the Kat Von D Metal Crush shadows, I want to get rid of them and replace them with shades from these. Like, the green one and the purple one, I want those so badly because they're so amazing. But I definitely did use these a lot this month. And I love them. They're amazing. They don't move from your lid. So I love those. All right. So now let's move on to highlighters. Um, so, of course, the first palette that I wanted to mention, if I could do this properly, is the ColourPop Innuendo palette. I actually have been using this a bunch this month. And I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in my last favorites video. I love this guy. It's such a pretty formula. I actually had like three days where I wore the ColourPop one from the Double Play Duo, which is still my favorite highlighter from ColourPop. And then I wore the Here Kitty Kitty one the day after that. And then I wore this guy in the day after that. And they're all amazing highlighting formulas. Like I said, I love this Glad You Came color and this On The Loose color. They're such beautiful colors. So definitely highly recommend this if you're looking to try a ColourPop highlighter try this guy this is really really beautiful so I'm not going to swatch too many things in this video because I feel like I've talked about these things like a million times and then I just wanted to mention the I'm going to do blushes and highlighters together because you know whatever um so I love this beauty bakery scoops Elise palette and the highlighter in here again is so freaking intense and I have been using the blushes this month as well and they're just so beautiful the formula is great in this palette like I said, I actually liked this more than the actual liquid lipsticks. So this highlighter is amazing. It's such a gorgeous yellow banana kind of highlighter, and it looks amazing on the skin. Um, and then the blushes are super pigmented. So this guy is beautiful. If you guys wanted to try a Beauty Bakery product, try this guy. This is so beautiful. Um, then, of course, I wanted to mention the Too Faced Natural Face Palette. This is the Bronzing Blush Highlight Blush Bronzing Va Veil Face Palette. I have been enjoying this palette so much since I've gotten it. And the packaging is just so gorgeous, you guys. I love the packaging. But all of these products are beautiful. I've used all of them. The highlighters are so pretty. The blushes are just Again, like a really nice buttery formula. And the bronzers, I've been using Sunny Honey because this one's like too dark for me and it's too shimmery. But the bronzer, buttery and beautiful. The highlighters are beautiful. These are the highlighters. Like they're just such a subtle, like dual chromey kind of formula. And I am obsessed with them. They're so pretty. So that's Starlight and that one is Satin Sheets. Just so beautiful. Um... If you've been looking for like a new highlighting blush kind of palette, um, I would suggest this one. And if you're a fan of the natural collection, I would suggest this guy. So let's just put this away. Oh my God, like. But the packaging is so beautiful. Um, and then the last like highlighting palette I wanted to mention is the Metal Crush Highlighting Palette. I've just been using this as a 
um, like glittery topper in my makeup routine and this just adds a beautiful pop. I don't really like wearing this by itself but wearing these shades as glittery toppers are really pretty so I usually use this orangey shade or this shade. I haven't really used the pink shade this month. I mostly use these two because I haven't really been wearing a lot of pink and they're so pretty to just top your makeup off with and to top your highlighters off with. So that's that guy. If I can put this one away too, that'd be great. Okay, so now let's move on to some individual highlighters and uh, blushes. Let's just do blushes real quick because blushes like we'll get through in like two seconds. So I really have been reaching for my MAC blushes this month. I especially have been using um, Max Melba, Margin, and Spring Sheen. These are like my favorite ones. Um, I brought these three to uh, Liz's house when we went to Connecticut for New Year's and those were the only blushes I brought with me. If I could get rid of these ones, I probably wouldn't just keep these three because I love them so much. They're just like staple blushes in my collection. I love using Spring Sheen in, this, in the springtime because it's called Spring Sheen and obviously it's spring right now. So MAC always makes a solid formula of blushes, so I definitely love these. I don't really love the Extra Dimension one that much, to be honest. I like these more, so I haven't really been using that one, so I didn't really want to mention it. I forgot to mention one more eyeshadow that I fell in love with after using the NYX Glitter Primer. If I could find the NYX Glitter Primer, that'd be great. Because we still have a ton of eyeshadow. Oh, I put the NYX Glitter Primer in my bathroom. Uh, I don't think I brought it back out when I wanted to talk about it, but it's amazing for your eyeshadow. And I've just been using it every day now to bring out the pigment in my eyeshadows and also to make my eyeshadows last a lot longer on my lid. But this L'Oreal Infallible Eyeshadow in the shade Amber Rush is so beautiful. I think I used this in a Get Ready With Me. Did I use it in that Get Ready With Me, the everyday makeup tutorial? I think I did. It was so beautiful on my lid that day because I used the glitter primer and it lasted so much longer and it did not transfer. So I am obsessed with this shadow now. I remember when I didn't use the glitter primer, it transferred a lot. And now when I use the glitter primer, it doesn't transfer at all. So I'm obsessed with this eyeshadow now. I can't wait to put it on again. Because that was the last time I used it, but now I can't wait to use it again. So sorry about that. And then I did want to mention just two eyeliners. If I could find the other one. Where is my, oh, where is it? I wanted to mention my other MAC one. You know what, we'll find it at the end. We'll just find it at the end. We're going to uh, finish up with uh, blushes and highlights. So I only have like two more blushes to mention, and then honestly the rest are highlighters because I've been trying out so many highlights this month. Um... I'm just trying to reorganize a bit because I feel like I have a ton of products to talk about. Okay, so honestly, like, I don't know where my eyeliner went, and now I'm, like, pretty annoyed. I didn't use it today. Anyway, um, so this Essence Satin Touch Blush, I actually really have been enjoying this month. This one's in the shade uh, Satin Coral. It just has a really pretty buttery satin finish to it. So I really do enjoy this blush, so I like that one a lot. Also the Natasha Denona Blush Duo in the shade uh Palette number 14 in the shades 2-2 and Golden Coral. I actually do enjoy this shade more, but I actually don't think I've reached for it this month. But I've used this one a couple of times this month. It's not very pigmented, so I would say, like, maybe go for a different palette that has, like, a little bit darker peachy tones in it. Um, but this one's not that pigmented, so I was a little bit disappointed with that. Um, but it's still good. I still use it. And then the Makeup Forever Duo, this blush shade is so beautiful. Every time I wear it, it's so buttery on the skin and it's so pigmented. The highlight, not so much, but the blush is beautiful. Um, and then the last blush is the Burt's Bees Toasted Cinnamon Blush. This is so pretty on the skin. It's very buttery, super pigmented, and it looks really pretty on the skin. Um, so I do love this as well. So that's it for 
blushes. Now let's move on to highlighters because we have a ton to talk about still. And then we're also going to talk about just, uh, well, we're just going to mention this bronzer real quick, real quick, real quick. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills bronzer in the shade Rosewood. This is so pretty on the skin, you guys. It's such a beautiful shade. Um, it's really buttery, really beautiful, and I really like it for my fair skin. So I've been enjoying that a lot. I've used it a ton since I've gotten it. I've used it about five times, and it's really beautiful on the skin. And then the other bronzer I've been using a lot is the Kevin Aquan, the Neo Bronzer in the shade Capri. I actually just uh, recently hit pan on it, so there's a little bit of baby pan on there. But I'm not surprised because I feel like there's not that much product that comes in these, but honestly, it's totally fine. But I actually really enjoy, do enjoy this bronzer. It's really, really nice on the skin. It blends out really pretty. Also really pigmented, so I do love that as well. So now let's move on to highlighters. So let's talk about the ones I want to talk about first. Actually, the one I've been using the most that I've gotten recently is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezy Highlighter. I know that everyone and their mom is talking about this highlighter right now, but it is really gorgeous on the skin. It looks wet on the skin. It doesn't look too glittery. It just looks like a beautiful golden sheen on your skin. And I actually didn't love it when I first tried it, and now I actually really do enjoy it. So um, maybe I just had to scrape off that first layer. Maybe that's why I didn't really enjoy it, but that is the highlighter right here. And it's really, really pretty. So I've been enjoying that one a lot. I have worn it like four times already. So this is like the highlighter I've worn the most lately. Um, let's talk about the newer highlighters first. Then the Stila Heaven's Hue Highlighter in the shade Kitten. So pretty on the skin. It gives this gorgeous sheen. Like it doesn't really swatch like anything. But like I told you guys, I'm super into cream to powder highlighters like lately. And this is really beautiful. Um, it, you're really not going to see too much on my hand. Right now, it really does not swatch like anything, but on the face, wet, it's beautiful. So that one is Kitten right here. Again, it's not going to be that pigmented at all, but it is a beautiful highlighter on the skin. So I've been enjoying that one too. Then the next one is the, uh, let's mention this guy, because this one I am obsessed with. This is the Ofra Cosmetics Nikki Tutorials Highlighter in the shade Glazed Donut. You guys know how much I love Ofra Highlighter Formula, the Ofra, Ofra Highlighting Formula. And you guys know how much I love Beverly Hills and Rodeo Drive, but this one is so amazing. Like, Ofra is my top, 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 top favorite highlighting formula of all time and this one is no exception like this is insane how pigmented this is and when you put it on your face it is magical like you barely need any of it look at that isn't it so gorgeous if you're that person who loves an intense glow try the Ofra highlighters and buy them off the Ulta website because they're the, a lot cheaper and I got this during the 20% off sale. This this was probably like 20 bucks, and it's like originally 28 So, yeah, this is so gorgeous. She did an amazing job on this highlighter. Um, and then the last new highlighter I wanted to mention is Max Whisper of Guilt. I'm not too crazy about this highlighter, honestly. And honestly, like, I was expecting so much from this highlighter because it's such a cult classic. But I feel like kind of the same way as like NARS's Albatross, you know, stuff like that. It just like doesn't really meet your expectations and you have such high expectations that I actually have been enjoying mixing this with the Amrezy highlighter. I'm actually more impressed with that highlighter than this one. It's okay. It's not like amazing. Obviously, I'm not going to return it since it's Whisper of Guilt and I've been wanting this highlighter for like 10 gajillion years. It's right there. It's pretty, but I'm not, like, obsessed with it. I did wear it last night with the Amrezy highlighter, and it was really pretty, but I do like using it to intensify the Amrezy highlighter, too, and that was really pretty, but I'm not obsessed with it. I actually like the Oh Darling highlighter more. I actually think this is more pigmented, more intense on the skin, but I do prefer Whisper of Guilt for my skin tone. This one is a little bit dark for me. It's a little bit too gold. Um, but the Whisper of Guilt one's really pretty for my skin tone, but this is very intense, and I really, really like this one, but I think I still prefer the, um, 
baked mineralized formula from MAC rather than the extra dimension skin finishes. So that one is Oh Darling. I just have like gold all over my hands. But um, I'm not too obsessed with the uh, extra dimension formula. I don't love the blush that much either. The uh, uh, Fairly Precious blush that Nikki Tutorials suggested. It's okay, but the highlighters I like more. Um, and then we have a couple more to mention. Of course, I had to mention my Lancome uh, Dual Finish Highlighter in the shade Sparkling Peach. This one is just amazing. I love it so much. When I don't use this highlighter, I get like separation anxiety from it. So I did use it like two days ago. And it was so gorgeous on my skin. I actually mixed it with the ColourPop Innuendo palette. And they both look so pretty together. But this is just such a gorgeous, intense highlighter. I could swatch it a million times. Like, it's just so beautiful. I love this so much. And it's just a gorgeous, like, peachy color. Look how beautiful that is. Like, I can't get enough of it. So, if you're looking for a new highlighting formula to try, this is bomb. And then, uh, of course, the Burberry uh, Rose Gold Number no. 4 Fresh Glow Highlighter. This is gorgeous. Um, it's not like super pigmented, but again, it has that sheen kind of look to it, and it's really, really pretty. I almost wore this one today instead. I'm just wearing my Milani Afterglow highlighter today, but I really wanted to wear this one today, but I decided to go with the Afterglow one. So that one is the rose gold highlighter. It's just really, really pretty. These go on really, really nicely. It has that like gel formula. And then the last, the last two highlighters I wanted to mention... Of course, my Physician's Formula Butter Highlighter in the shade Champagne. This is amazing, you guys. Like, if you want something super inexpensive, and well, not super inexpensive. Physician's Formula is a little bit pricey for the drugstore. But if you want something that is going to give you such an intense glow, this is like one of the best highlighters I've ever tried from the drugstore. It is so intense. And again, it's that cream to powder formula. I just had to mention it again because I love it so much. So that one is the Physicians Formula one. It's so beautiful on the skin. I love it. I'm obsessed with it. And actually the last one I wanted to mention that actually really impressed me this month. And then we'll move on to lips. Because I got to get out of here soon. Of course I've been recording for too long. Because, you know, I always record for longer. This one is the e.l.f. Baked Highlighter in the shade Moonlight Pearls. This one actually really impressed me in a Get Ready With Me that I did recently. I don't know if it's the one that I posted or one I haven't posted yet. Because I did do another everyday Get Ready With Me that I haven't posted yet. But this was actually really gorgeous. Like uh, most people say you have to scrape off the top layer and then it's really, really pretty. And now I think it's really gorgeous on the skin. So it's not really going to swatch like anything. But on the face, it was really, really natural. Yeah, it's not going to swatch at all. But it was really, really nice. And I liked it a lot. So that's it for highlights. Now let's move on to lipsticks. Um, I wanted to mention my MAC liner, though. I'm wearing it on my uh, waterline today. This is the MAC technical liner in the shade Risk. I have been using this and the Costa Riche eyeliner so much. I literally, they're like the only two eyeliners I use. And I'm wearing this on my waterline today. It's so beautiful. I think it really just brings out my eyes and really like opens them up. So I've been obsessed with these. And the Costa Riche one is such a beautiful warm brown. I know why it's so popular now because it's so beautiful. And then if I want to wear a black liner, I mention this like every month, but it's so amazing. This is the Lancome Drama Extreme Longwear Eyeliner in the shade Noir Intense, and this is the black one. Honestly, this is like the best black eyeliner I've used. It just glides on your waterline, and it lasts for so long. I like this even more than the Urban Decay Perversion, and Zero is amazing too, but I find that this one lasts even longer, so... And then just one mascara that I've fallen back in love with again because I went to Ulta recently and they gave this to me as a sample. And I was like, oh my god, I love this mascara. This is the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. I love this mascara. This is one of my all-time favorites. It makes your lashes just so long because of the brush. And it just has such a great formula. So I love this guy. It's so pretty. Now let's just move on to lipstick. Now I have a bunch of regular lipsticks to talk about because you guys know I've been trying a ton of lipsticks this month 
and I just want to gather them all together so I can talk about all of them at the same time because your girl needs to go. Um, so I wanted to mention this one first because this one's definitely been one of my favorites this month. This is the Fenty Beauty by Rihanna Matte Mazelle Plush Matte Lipstick in the shade Single. I love this lipstick. It's so amazing. It has such a gorgeous color and it's such a beautiful formula. It's so pigmented, but it's so comfortable and it just glides on your lips. And I've been obsessed with this. Um, it's not too matte. It's so comfortable on your lips. And it even lasts a pretty decent amount of time through eating as well. So I'm obsessed with that. I love it. And then, of course, the other go-to lipstick that I wanted to mention is the one on my lips today. I can't get enough of this lipstick. Uh, both of these. These are the ColourPop Luxe lipsticks. And the one I'm wearing on my lips today is... Layover. I just love this lipstick so much. I'm not going to swatch it because it's obviously on my lips. Such a comfortable formula. Glides on the lips. Love this formula and I love this color. They're just so comfortable and they're not super matte. They just have such a creamy, nice formula. So I love this guy. And then the um, Money Side Up color is such a beautiful pink and it's also just glides on your lips as well. And that one is the Money Side Up color. It's so beautiful. I haven't worn this one half as much as Layover. This is like the sixth time I've worn this one. It's just been like my go-to nude. I love it. Um, then the next one I wanted to mention. This one I've been wearing a lot this month as well. This is the Smashbox uh, Be Legendary Lipstick in the shade Hideout. I got this from Marshalls. And this is a really nice formula, you guys. Really creamy, um, kind of really reminds me of the ColourPop one, but this is super comfortable on the lips, and it's such a gorgeous pink. I really have been enjoying this a lot, and I was really impressed with the formula, um, but I've used this about three times now, and I really just enjoy it a lot. It's really, really, really nice and creamy on the lips. Um, then the next one is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Peachy Matte Lipstick. This is actually really nice. Again, it's super matte. Um, so if you don't love super matte lipsticks, you're not going to love this. But I actually really like it. It has a really nice formula to it. It's not too dry. And it goes on really, really nicely. So I've been enjoying that too. And then, of course, the MAC Patrick Star and the Nicki Minaj The Right Note Lipstick. The Patrick Star Lipstick in the, sh in the shade She Better Work. I think in the last month's video, um, I really wasn't able to try this out. I think I had just received it, so I have tried it out a couple of times this month, and it's such a gorgeous pink. I, of course, knew I wasn't going to be disappointed with MAC lipsticks because you guys know I fucking love MAC lipsticks so much. And then the Right Note lipstick is such a beautiful cream sheen. The She Better Work one is a matte, but this is a gorgeous... Um, cream sheen lipstick. This is so comfortable on the lips as well, and it's not too pale, honestly. Um, it actually works really nicely with my skin tone. Um, then the next one is the Too Faced Skinny Dippin' Natural Nudes Coconut Cream Lipstick, and this is actually really nice on the lips. It's not my favorite one out of all of these, but it's super creamy. I think that's why it kind of like doesn't last too long on the inside. Um, if I like eat or drink something, but that's like typical with any lipsticks, but I do find it kind of wears off a bit before I eat anything But but I just think it's because it's super creamy. So that one is a skinny different one, but it's super comfortable I have been enjoying the formula a lot And I think that's it for regular lipsticks now. Let's move on to uh, Just liquid lipsticks which honestly like I really don't have too many. I was just going to mention, this one's the one I've been wearing the most. The Giorgio Armani Lip Maestro in the shade 202. I just think it's such a comfortable formula. I wore this out to dinner last night with my boyfriend. And it was just so nice. It's just such a beautiful, like, moussey formula. So that one is right there. It's just so pretty. He got this for me for Christmas. And it's just really nice. And then he also got me this one. This is the YSL Matte Couture Lipstick. In the shade number seven is such a comfortable formula one of the best liquid lipstick formulas it's just so comfortable this one and the YSL beautiful formulas this one is very liquidy but it's so beautiful on the lips I almost wore this one last night over the Giorgio Armani but I wanted something a little bit warmer since I was wearing a warmer toned eye with the Natasha Denona 
and that one is the YSL lipstick. It's such a gorgeous nude. And then um, the Bite Beauty uh, Amuse Bouche lipstick, liquid lip in lip whip in the shade uh, lip whip, right? Liquify lip in the shade whip. This is actually really nice as well. I have mentioned this before. I know these are all nude lipsticks, but that's mostly what I've been living in this month. If I'm going to wear another lipstick, then I'm going to wear like a bold lipstick, but I've mentioned all of those before. And these ones are the ones I've been rotating the most since I, these are newer lipsticks to my collection. So that one is uh, the Bite Beauty lipstick. Really nice, comfortable formula. And I think that's pretty much it for liquid lips. I just wanted to mention this Burberry lipstick as well. I forgot to mention it. This is the... Uh, hydrating Lip Color Burberry Kisses in the shade Garnet number 81. This one's really pretty as well. Super comfortable on the lips. This one's a little bit more of a unique shade. It's just like a super sheer, like purpley shade. It's really nice and comfortable on the lips. I actually have used this about three times now and I actually really enjoy the formula. I also got this at Marshalls as well for a pretty good price. And then we just have three glosses to talk about and that, oh, I found my Costa Riche eyeliner. I found it. It was behind my computer. I love this eyeliner. It's so amazing for uh, the waterline. It's just such a pigmented, gorgeous, warm brown. Oh, I love it. And then for lip glosses, I actually have been into just two lip glosses this month, and I actually um, have been working this, working lip glosses more into my routine as the uh, months get warmer. So the ColourPop Caffeine Lights Moon Child Lip Gloss. I have been obsessed with this over lipsticks. I've worn this a ton, like at least five or six times this month. And it's just the perfect gloss to wear over lipsticks. And that's the gloss right there. It's just such a gorgeous everyday gloss. I've just been obsessed with this one. I've just been reaching for it a, a ton, so much. And then the other one I've been using is the Becca Liquid Crystal Lip Topper Glow Gloss in the shade Champagne Champagne. Champagne. Champagne Dream Times Bellini. Look how gorgeous this is. Honestly, I probably should wear this by itself at some point in like the summertime because I don't find it's as pigmented or glittery when you put it on top of a, of a lipstick. And that's what it should be since it does claim to be a lip topper. Um, but I do find it's a lot more glittery without a uh, without lipstick but it's still really gorgeous it's like a beautiful peachy glittery gloss I mean but yeah these two I've been reaching for the most I love these and then the Maybelline Vivid Hot Lacquer lip gloss in the shade 64 Unreal this one's really beautiful as well this is a lot more pigmented but this is so pretty I want to use this a lot more this month as well I probably have only used it about twice because it's so pigmented to go over lipsticks I've been trying to use these two together, but I find that this one, like, kind of wears off or it doesn't really dry that well when I wear it with this. It kind of, like, flakes up. So I just wear this by itself usually. And that is the MAC Lip Gloss. It's very pigmented, but very comfortable. And that's it, you guys. Um, that's it for my favorites. I feel, like, so out of breath now. So now I need to go to his house. Um, I'm just wiping off the... Uh, makeup off of my hands and that's it you guys so i hope you guys enjoyed this favorites video please 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 let me know what your favorites were this month what your staples were i love to know and also let me know if you guys have are going to see avengers or planning to see it i have not seen it yet so don't spoil anything for me please um i don't even have a chance to see it i would have seen it last night but actually we went out for my boyfriend's birthday last night for because my boyfriend's birthday was a month ago, but we never got to go out with his parents. So, uh, my, his parents invited us to go out last night, and we had no idea, actually, until, like, uh, like, the end of the evening, and they, like, came out and sang to him and everything, and I was like, oh, that was really sweet. So, we went out last night with his parents, and, uh, that was the only opportunity that I had to see it, because his friends invited us to go, but they wanted to go at 12.30 at night, and I wanted to go at 6.30, but it ended up not working out. And I'm actually working the next two Tuesday nights, and Tuesday nights are bargain Tuesdays, and I really wanted to go, 
But I'm working Tuesday and Thursday this week, and I have class, so it's kind of really annoying. So I'm probably not going to see it until, like, two weeks from now, but maybe it'll die down a little bit, and I'll be able to see it at that point. But I'm so jealous, and I haven't been able to see it yet. So, yeah, I love you guys. I'm going to go, so I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Follow me on all my social media, and bye, guys.